Hey everybody, welcome back to my show, Voices of Courage with Brandy J. And I have an amazing guest with me today, overdue, <laughs> David Madison. Oh, pl- I'm so sorry. I thought I was going to sneeze. I was going to be so mad. If I do, forgive me. <laughs> you know, it is allergy Why? season. It's allergy season, so you're totally allowed to sneeze. There you go. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. have that effect on them. And they, <laughs> they see me and they can't keep their composure because, you know, look at, look at how awesome this this thing is. Oh, man. That's funny. Okay. We'll try this again, guys. The, Dave, the great David Madison. <laughs> You know why? You know why is our names not on on our little things here like they are when you use Streamyard? It's kind of strange. I I don't know. I um I think it's when we just do recording because I know like your name is on the like like in the bottom. Like when I see mm-hmm. us, there's another screen. I see Joy and I see David Lee Madison. Oh sweet. Yeah. So I think it's because of the background they have right here. So when the background's gone, then it'll probably it'll pop up. But it says it down here. Well, there you go. This way, in case in the middle of the interview I forget who I am, I can always cheat and say, <laughs> yes, that's me. I'm Dave. I'll remind you. <laughs> How are you, Brandy? We've been friends on Facebook now for many, many years, I think. And, yeah. And uh, uh, this is the first time. I, I think I spoke to you via chats and stuff. This is actually the first time I get to chat with you face-to-face. You're a beautiful woman, true. Brandy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, stop. No, you are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think it feels like I've spoken to you, maybe because I'm used to listening to you because mm-hmm. I see you on video, right? So that could be why I think we just felt like we've talked before. No, I think that we had like uh, chats uh, on Facebook. Uh, and I think there were times when you were doing your show and I would chat back with you. And I think that's probably why it seems like there's more familiar that I swore I always have trouble with familiarity than, than <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting old. My lips don't work anymore. My tongue doesn't work anymore. Every word I try to use, I screw up now. So please bear with me. I will do my best not to look like a schmuck on your on your show. Well, we'll get you get, get you going before you just completely forget how to talk all together. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll be by the end of this uh, interview. I'll be doing sign language probably. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, this is gonna be a good one, guys. This is gonna be a good one. But no, I'm really happy that that you um you came on. I know you've always said that you would, and so I was like, okay, the time is now. Just just get it, just get it done. Um, I know that I know that you know I met you through like the indie brigade and everything, and you are. Mm-hmm. A producer, writer, uh, what is that? The Wit, the Wit, my center right? Oh, Wit's End? Wit's End, uh huh. Yeah, that was my Wit. last film, Wit's End, that came out in theaters uh, in July of 2020 and is now out on all the streaming platforms at Amazon and Tubi and and uh, everyone that you could see a streaming movie on, you could find Wit's End. That was a fun movie. That's a movie I did with uh, Brian O'Halloran, who was Dante from Clerks and is a major. Uh, a major stalwart of the Kevin Smith films. And my dear friend, Scott Schiaffo was also in that film. Scott is also uh, from the Clerks films and, and uh, he was uh, in Kevin Smith films too. He's a wonderful, wonderful actor. He did, I think he did a film called Vulgar uh, too, which was uh, his foray into horror. So, and Brian started in Vulgar. So uh, yeah, the three, we're kind of like three amigos where we're very close and uh, they helped me, uh, with my survival film, which was a survival film about a gentleman who gets stuck in a blizzard and then has to fight against all odds to survive just to get back to his family. And yep, Wits End came out in 2020 and uh, was, uh, was a very challenging film to make uh, because we shot it uh, during intense blizzards. Uh, both storms had over four feet of snow. And anybody who's ever shot a movie will tell you that shooting under regular circumstances is challenging shooting in uh you know negative five and ten degrees with you know 40 50 mile an hour winds and four or five feet of snow make it even more challenging so that was a very challenging film but it was uh one i'm very proud of because it's just a small independent film that uh my dear friends from uh you know helped me out on and uh we got it out there and it seems to have a, a an audience of people who seem to like it awesome awesome and I, you also have um Hush, right? Ah, Mr. Hush, yes. Mr. Mr. Hush, Hush, 
Mr. Hush came out in 2012, and uh, the year that came out, uh, we were contacted by the Margaret Herrick Museum and Library, which is the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences Library, and they chose Mr. Hush to be one of the 50 films that are put in their core archives, meaning that the uh, film Mr. Hush will be preserved for infinity, forever, in, in, in that museum. And I'm extremely honored that, you know, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of movies that are released every year, but they only choose 50 to put in their core collection, and we were one of that 50. So, uh, yeah, it was awesome. a wonderful uh, a wonderful horror film that I shot up in Milford, Pennsylvania. It had Brad Lurie in it, who was uh, Michael Myers, and he uh, awesome. he was in the X, in X-Men movies as Stryker. He was a great actor. And this is Stephen Jeffries, who was Evil Ed in Fright Night and 976 Evil, and just one of my favorite actors from the 80s. He's uh, in Mr. Hush. Uh, I also had Steve Jet Dash, who was uh, who sadly has uh, passed away since we made Mr. Hush, but uh, he's a legendary uh, actor. Played Jason Voorhees in uh, Friday the 13th, too. And uh, we had Brian O'Holloran in that movie. And it was a really cool, loving ode to 80s horror movies that uh, a lot of people, you either you really dug that movie because you understood uh, what it was, the story it was trying to tell, and it was a contemporary reinvention of 80s movies, or you didn't. So, <laughs> but uh, it was a, a loving uh, film uh, that made two national top 10 lists. It made Redbox's top 10 rentals for uh, six weeks. And it made the DVD Blu-ray sale uh, top ten uh, sales for uh, eight weeks. Uh, so I was very, very proud for a movie of that size uh, to uh, get kind of the recognition it did. It played in the Lamley Theater in Hollywood. It played all throughout the country at some of the most prestigious theaters, uh, the Dallas Theater in Dallas, oddly enough. And uh, it was just, uh, uh, just one of those things where all the stars aligned and we were able to make... What many to believe uh, is a cool little cult classic film. That's awesome. I mean, and, I, and that's cool too because you know you you have a love for horror, and that's and I do too. And I think that's the other big connection. That's how I met you was mm. the whole horror thing. So like every time I hear those names, like you know Jason Voorhees and stuff like that, I'm like yeah, yeah, Jason. Michael Myers, I still need. To, I I didn't know what else he acted in because I still want to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jason, like I don't know what they sound like, and I probably do because I didn't know that was them in right. the other movies because they didn't have their masks. <laughs> what, are some of your, what are your What are some of your favorite horror movies, Brent? Oh man, let me tell you. Okay, let's see. Um, Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. All time classic. Right. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, Friday Thirteenth. What's the other one? I have so many. I love zombies movies. Anything that's zombies. Mm. And then vampires. It used to be vampires. I really did. I kind of lost the the whole vampire thing. Unless it's like one of those, like, I wouldn't even say Bram Stoker. I would. I did, I did like Interview with the Vampire. I'm not going to lie. I could watch that right now. Mm. But uh, most of if it's zombies, anything that's like zombies, you know, like. I was a big vampire fan. I mean, I loved Fright Night, Little Lost Boys. Near Dark. Mm. Those are like what, some of my really, really favorite vampire films. And even Pet Cemetery. Yeah, Pet <laughs> Cemetery. Yeah, well, it's not a vampire yeah. film, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, going back to like Lugosi's Dracula, and there was Frank Langella's Dracula in 1980. It was a wonderful movie. So I guess I mean I, I I like my monsters to be fake, like werewolves and vampires and. And things that, you know, really don't hurt people in real life because the world's kind of a shitty and scary place yeah. to be. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. I, I'm so glad I never made a movie where like, and I'm just being sincere, like where there's like a gunman that opens fire on people or gun that promotes gun violence. Yeah. Because I live, I live right on an outskirt of New York City. Uh, I live in the, in the hills of Pennsylvania, but believe it or not, New York City is just a short hour and a half train ride away. And I grew up in New York City. And you see, like, on what happened there today. I mean, there was a gunman who just opened fire, shot 11 people on the train this afternoon. And uh, it's just horrific. You know, these things that can happen in real life uh, yeah. are not the stories I want to tell. Uh, 
If I ever, if a werewolf or a vampire ever kills anybody, <laughs> you could complain to me about the movies I make. Is the way I feel about it. Yeah, I can totally understand that. Yeah, I don't like those ones either because it's so realistic. Yeah, you know. I mean, I I just don't find a need to tell those kind of stories that sadly seem to be happening in reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, those are the type of things that sit with me like already. And like I took, I don't know if you remember back uh, maybe some years back when uh, those string of um, shootings were happening like in movie theaters and malls and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I think that around that time, I think one of the Twilight movies was coming out. It had came out because I remember going to the movies with a friend of mine that used to live upstairs. And I think that was the first time or the last time that I, I had went. It took me a while before I went back into the, to the movie theaters because at, at that point I was just like, I'm not I'm just not going to go anymore. And then it, they kept happening churches, school. And I was just like, all right. You know, but then it just made me even more just aware. Like, I still, I still, especially after the pandemic, I'm still, I'm still not fully back. I, I could use a little help, <laughs> but I always am looking around to see where an exit is, you oh, know, yeah. or how I can get out of a situation. I always do that anywhere I go. I'm like, I got to sit in a certain place because I got to be able to get out of here and get over you. <laughs> but no, it's that's, how, that's how it that is. Have, yep. It's kind of horrifying that we have to live that way, but it's sad. Yeah. It's a sad reality. I mean, uh, I don't want to go in any kind of political direction on your show, but I'm, I mean, I, I just think if you feel the need that you have to have a to carry a gun, you kind of, I don't know, this isn't the old West. I think you're part of the problem. Right. But what yeah. 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 And if you go political, Hey, I mean, it's places of courage. I yeah, totally no. get it. I totally <laughs> get it. Cause if we didn't have the gun, then it's like, I think, gun safety, gun control, like those things, you know, need to be talked about like more. Absolutely. And you know, what's horrifying. If you look through history at, at almost all of these terrible mass shootings like Columbine and uh, I can't think of the one that was where the, the two kids uh, shut up. Uh, oh, it was one of the really big ones back in early, like two, 1999, 1988. It was uh, Dylan Claybold and the other mm -hmm. kid. I can't remember the name of the school, but it was the very first big uh, uh, school massacre. And you had, oh, wait, that was Columbine. I'm thinking mm -hmm. Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Yeah, yeah. Yep, Sandy Hook. And you just had one down in Florida. And my dear friend Tiffany Shepis's daughter uh, was mm -hmm. shot at high school. And, and one of the sad realities of a, a lot of these mass shootings, almost the majority of them, are they're conducted by legal uh, guns that were bought by responsible gun owners who were just irresponsible enough to keep uh, those guns out of the hands of people who were going to do horrible mm -hmm. things with yep. uh, with them. So, I mean, uh, I don't know what the answer is, uh, but uh, for me, uh, you know, I'm six foot seven, 265 pounds. I, I, I don't feel the need, I don't feel the need like I need that extension to have a gun. I'm, I, I've got, I pack all the heat I need, so I'm okay with that. Right. right. I totally understand that. Yeah, that's crazy that that happened. You just never know. I just that just really bothers me. You know, you go outside your house, you don't really expect to have some mental health. And who knows what that man was going through? But yeah. it's all like a trickle effect. You never know. Like when you don't take care of one thing, and and it, it could just destroy other lives. Like when we don't take care of mental health, and we we don't we skip all these. You know, we miss all these areas where people need help, and it could trickle down and end up. You know harm it. it's like a what do you call it like a domino effect or something you know if we took all the money that we spend on buying guns and put it into mental health i there'd be a lot less shootings that would be yeah. sure yeah and you know what really bothered me about what happened today is that uh, a lot of the kids who uh, a lot of the people who were shot on on the train this morning were high school kids going to school and i used to live in queens and i took the f train Every morning from uh, Middle Village, Queens, where I grew up, to La Salle Academy, which is on 2nd Avenue and 2nd Street. And I was started at 14 years old, going on the G train to Roosevelt Avenue and then taking the F train from Roosevelt Avenue to 2nd Avenue. And, uh, you know, that could have very, that's just the kid who got shot, those kids who got shot today is just, you know, me, you know, 30 years later. And just a kid trying to get to high school. Yeah. And you shouldn't have to... You know, it's horrifying. You know, you've got a kid who's just getting up and do, trying to do the right thing and trying to get an education. He just hops on the train to go to school. You know, and some asshole with a gun shoots him. So, you know, it, it sucks. What can I tell yeah. you? 
It does. It does. You know, and people just talk about all the wrong stuff. Like it's, it's all cute and defined for like a minute when we're talking about these celebrities, like uh, Will and you know Will and mm-hmm. Chris and stuff like that. But then it's kind of like then we, but we really have some stuff that we need to talk about, you know. And it's like stuff like this, you know, that we. Oh, absolutely. And you know, the the Will and Chris thing was it, it was just sad on so many levels because yeah. you're at the highest point of your game. You're just. You just won the Oscar for, you know, you're about to win the Oscar, the most prestigious award in, in, in your line of work. Yeah, he chose a and fine you time. Behave, yeah. <laughs> and then you behave like an ass and you ruin it for like, you don't know, you ruin it for everybody. I'm just yeah. being honest. I mean, if he's black, white, brown, yellow, whatever the color, it doesn't matter. When you act like an ass, you act like an ass. And that's mm-hmm. what he did. It's just, it's just the truth, you know, and yeah. it sucks because... He ruined his career. He's a pariah now yeah, for an yeah. impulsive, stupid thing to do to hit somebody. Yeah. People didn't believe it was going to happen. They were like, oh, he'll be fine. That's Will Smith. I was like, I don't know. Because as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm pretty sure nobody would be calling you for any bullying campaigns. Yeah, That's no, bad I'm right like, there on that level. There's, so <laughs> there's, 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 some, there's some things you don't do. You just don't yeah. hit. You don't. I mean. It's funny because I think when you watch the video, a lot of people think that they were kind of gagging with each other like it was a joke. Yeah. But then when, then when Will Smith sat down and you oh, saw yeah. the anger when he started screaming back obscenities at him, you realize that it was not a joke. Yeah. And uh, sadly, you know, at the very least, it may not have ended his career, but it put a severe, you know, uh, you know severely yeah. dampered it. And why and why does Chris Rock now forever have to be, you know, he didn't do anything. The joke was so harmless. Was, yeah. I mean, if you're a celebrity, you get picked on. I'm not even a celebrity and you can go online and see like thousands of people picking on me. You know, it's just when people <laughs> when you do anything artistic, people will yeah. say their piece, you know, what they think about your work or what they think about you. It's just part of of, you know, the game you play when you want to yeah. have a face in, in, in the entertainment industry. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just a joke. I don't think Chris Rock meant anything overly, uh, you know, cruel about it. Right. You know, it's not like she lost her hair because of cancer or something, God forbid, life-threatening. I right. like Asia, man. Half the, half the people in that thing were wearing two pays a week. <laughs> let's be, no, let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> so, uh, no, seriously. So, uh, I mean, That's what my friend was saying. He was like, men been going bald since the day. <laughs> He's like, nobody cares about our ball. I was like, no shit. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Probably every leading man in there who's over 50, every single one of them probably had a hairpiece on. So, I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. So, I mean, she looked good too. I I didn't even know she had it. I didn't even know she had it. She is stunningly beautiful. That it doesn't, you know, know what's funny? And And this is, I saw her back 20 years ago in a movie called Demon Night with Billy Zane. I remember that. And she's completely bald in that movie. Twenty-five when she's like literally a kid in that movie, and she's completely bald. So I always just thought that was the look she chose to, mm-hmm. because she's a be- it works for her. Yeah, she's always had short hair. So I didn't even yeah. notice until he said something. I'm still right. like, it looks good to me. <laughs> so I would have, cl- you know, I would have came out and made a goofy joke like that myself, thinking that that was just the choice that she chose because she's stunning, regard, yeah. you know, regardless. So I mean, they were. I think there's something more going on there between his wife and him than there was between Chris and Oh yeah. Well. Entanglements. Think, that's a whole nother story. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. No, I, I think he reacted that way not because he was overly mad at the joke. I think yeah. he react, reacted that way because she shot him a luck like mm-hmm. you know, yeah. And I don't know. What do I can't, it seems like he can't win for losing with her. So he probably he's just like trying to find himself. Because he talked about it. Yeah. About uh his mom being um violence there and he felt like he couldn't do anything to help her and then Tupac and Jada he talked about that how he felt threatened by that whole thing like he couldn't live up to him so I think he's just been trying to find himself as a man and he just chose the Oscars was the night for him to lose it (laughs) you know what the scariest part of that was is that he's a much much bigger man than Chris Rock like much yes and he went up there and he hauled <laughs> off and hit him as hard as he could and chris rock barely mo- like he took it like a champ he did he was just like dude i was like such a <laughs> pathetic bitch <laughs> like what was that he was, that's what yeah. he was like what was that right it was like was there was there a, was there a mosquito on my cheek <laughs> 
So, I mean, it was like, I don't know what what he was thinking because yeah. uh, he 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 lost on every level that night as, with, with with the way he acted. And it's very, very sad that you're going to get your first Best Actor, uh, you know, Academy Award, but have it, you know, behave like he did that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a sad fact. Staying for life, but hey, yeah. choices you make. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. There are idiots out there who believe that that was staged. And you really have to be incredibly stupid to think that Will Smith is going to throw a half a billion dollar career literally in the garbage to help the Academy Awards get ratings. Right. There's people. I think people are just so shocked that, it, that they were like, oh, no, that's got to be fake. He wouldn't just do that. People didn't know what to think, you know, because it was like, he, did he just do that? But I was like, I think he just did that. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Yeah, but there are still people to this day who argue that it was uh, all to be a ratings grab for the Academy yeah. Awards. And let's be honest, the the Academy Awards is not a business entity that makes Chris Rock or Will Smith any money. Right. <laughs> they're acting in their comedian and their careers do. So they're not going to, you know, uh, tarnish their careers in any way to help the Academy Awards get ratings. Right. So, I mean, that was clearly everything about it was real. And it was just, you know, I don't know. They it even said crazy. after that that the ratings were still low. They checked and they said people still weren't even with that. that yeah, it was ha- almost, at, it was almost at the end of the show. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, I mean, they, they, I, everybody was talking after it because everybody online was uh, making a big deal. Yeah. But uh, I, actually, I also, uh, I don't know when we're going to air this show, but uh, at the day that we're taping it right now, uh, a very great comedian and somebody who's really loved in the industry passed away. And I just want to say rest in peace, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, who passed away today. Who you probably know from, uh, uh, he was the uh, Aladdin. He was in Aladdin. Mm-hmm. Not a, Are you a Disney know. fan movie? Yeah, it was, was a big one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he played, uh, I think, the parrot in Aladdin oh, and had an... Yeah. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried had an enormous career as a comedian, and it was actually beloved by lots of people. So, rest in peace, Gilbert Gottfried. Yes, most definitely rest in peace. I didn't know that. Oh, oh, come on, David. You're making me cry now all of a sudden. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. <laughs> no sadness. No, I'll just <laughs> rest in peace. Uh, I'll pull it together. I do have a habit of sometimes crying on my own show, so don't don't get weirded out. <laughs> Get weird Two tears drop, you know. I absolutely. Sensitive. I really <laughs> like people who are, you are human, who have emotion, who actually are, have substance to them. And if you show emotion, it just shows that you're deep. So, yeah, I get shit for, for it. <laughs> like, are you crying? Like, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> like people. Then those are the people that you shouldn't really worry about their opinion. I know, right? So, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh goodness! Well, yes, most definitely rest in peace, and, and to those families, the families of today on that, and the children on that that train. Uh, heart goes out to you, and yeah, yes. that was that's horrifying because the 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 shooter was at large in the New York City subway system for hours, so nobody knew if he was going to, you know, continue his rampage and hurt more people. But luckily, mm-hmm. he only uh, he only shut up the one train, you know. I say that I don't say I don't mean to say it flippantly. I mean, luckily, honestly, luckily, he yeah. didn't uh, perpetrate any more crimes. So, hopefully, they'll get him before he gets to hurt anybody else again. Yes, hopefully. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, that's the so way. What, what can you say? It's like nothing you can say. This is where we're at in this, this world. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, hopefully, you know what? If 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 people decide to make it a better place. And if we all work on that together, I'm sure that uh, uh, we can. You know, oh. I choose to always be exceptionally kind to people. And uh, I don't see color or religion or political affiliation in anybody. I treat people the way I want myself to be treated. And I treat them like that until they show me a reason not to treat them that way anymore. Yeah. And so... Uh, that's how you do it. Yep. I mean, Character. I would rather I would rather go out and make many people smile today than I would then to go out and give people a hard time and make them sad. Because what's the point of 
of making people miserable. It just makes you a bully. Right. Exactly. See, this thing, see, that's what I was talking about in my other show. I was like, I woke up and I did a show. I said, let's intentionally, like, when you wake up in the morning with the intent of when you go out today to do something kind for someone, say hello, like, ask, you know, like, see somebody that probably notice of somebody that might look a little you know like they could use a kind word or something it's like and just do it just because you know because you can and it's free mm-hmm. you know i was in free. a store not not three hours ago and in front of me was a little boy and he was buying a pack of baseball cards and he put the pack of baseball cards up on a counter and he was scrounging it, it was like a dollar eight because the pack was a dollar and eight cents tax in new york so he took all his change and he was putting it up on the thing and right behind me was the display where the baseball cards were. And I grabbed a giant handful and I put them on the thing. And it was like 12 bucks. And I bought the kid the rest of the packs that were in the box. And I said, son, go and enjoy opening these baseball cards because I loved doing that when I was a kid. And he had the biggest smile. He looked so happy. And, uh, you know, it cost me 12 bucks. And somewhere, somewhere tonight, a kid's opening up. Instead of one pack of baseball cards, he's opening up 13 packs of baseball right. cards. That's and amazing. he's like thinking of like, wow, there's there's kind and decent people out there. Yeah. Because you never know, you know, what people's lives are like, what their households are like. Uh, so the little, yeah. littlest kindness that means nothing to us means the world to other people. Because I grew up in abstract poverty. My dad uh, <laughs> left my family when I was nine years old. And my mom had, I had five, there was five of us total. So she had four other, uh, she, I had four brothers. I was the youngest. And uh, it, it, when you're a woman and a man leaves you after having five kids with them, uh, you kind of feel defeated. So she really didn't, wasn't able to support us. So from age nine, I lived in total poverty and, and had to hustle my way through life. And luckily, uh, once I got through you know I, I was blessed to have a fine education because I was an athlete and I was able to get scholarships uh, I was able to do things in, in my life and now uh, if I could make anybody smile I don't know if you follow me on Facebook at Christmas time I offer to oh, buy yeah. random strangers mm-hmm. their kids if they need presents yeah uh, I always put up on Facebook if you need something please don't hesitate to ask because I'm deadly serious about it if I if there's something I can do to ever help anybody out I'm always willing to do it because I'm a firm believer that karma is the thing that kind of uh, makes everything around us uh, kind of has its own energy and flow. Yeah, does. And if you put good karma out there, it's going to just uh, circulate around yourself and around all the people you love. So I kind of live under that kind of umbrella of kindness and karma. Yeah, totally get it. empathy kindness yeah all that and that's why when people are like evil or just like because i always say human beings just treat other human beings so horrifically but for me i always feel like you know when people do that it's like all you doing is just bringing you know that energy that karma upon yourself and your your loved ones you know when you do those things and it's kind of like to me it's like you know know, it it makes (laughs) absolutely no sense because you know, we're all kind of in this world together. We're yeah. all uh, made of the same stuff. Yeah. And uh, cry, we bleed, we love, we, yeah, you know, we go through all the emotions. Well, absolutely. <laughs> we're all, made. Yeah. so what's the point of being, I mean, the word cruel is just, it, 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 the word sounds like what it, what it, what it, what it <laughs> right? means. Yeah. Can't make that wanna, sound beautiful I, at all. <laughs> yeah. I never want to be associated with the word cruel. I mean, right. Like, right. What the hell? I mean, what the hell? <laughs> like cool. Cool sounds cool. Good. It's cruel not cool is, to be cruel. <laughs> absolutely. You just made a slogan. That's probably going to make you a billion dollars. That's all. <laughs> not so cool bad. to be cruel. There you go. Got pat I'm going to see right that on bumper stickers. And go, ah, she cashed in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And it looks like a harder time. It doesn't look like a good time. And because people that are, they're never happy. They always just look cruel, like mad, angry. I'm like, it looks you know, like a bad but time. But, that's, <laughs> but, the sad, but the sad reality of it, Brandy, is is that for some bizarre reason, uh, more people in 2022 desire to be cruel <sighs> than to be yeah. kind. 
And let's be, uh, I'm just, we, are, we have to be honest with each other because we know it's true. Yeah, very true. It's gone bad. And and I and I don't know why, as as a species, as humanity, as whatever you want to call us, why we chose why we choose to to be cr uh, cruel over kind, uh, because you, I mean you just all you have to do is watch the news on any given night. And you see what's going on in Ukraine. It's you. It's mass extinction of human beings by you know one set of people over another who are essentially the same people. Think that's almost a civil war because Ukraine was a part of Russia at one time. And, and and you have you have uh, religions fighting each other. You have mm -hmm. races fighting each other, and it's all. See China? What's going on yeah. over there? Yep, yeah. it's oh all just God. sad. It's sad and pathetic because all over the world, people are yeah. losing their minds. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. and uh, I think kindness is the key to getting us all back on track. But yep. what do I know? You know a lot because I said the same thing. I said I was like, you love kindness, uh, you know. Yeah, empathy. I said that could change the world. I was like, mm -hmm. those three things right there, and it's free. And what's the problem here? <laughs> no, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Yeah, people that's are just distracted. Like. It's like all, all the stuff that's going on. I think it's intentionally done to us so that people don't come together. They don't get in touch with that because I think we all have something within us that you know. Because you know, animals. I like to watch nature. I think because nature is true to itself. I, I think we can learn a lot from watching how animals respect their, um, they like the and you know, there's like they respect mm -hmm. it, no matter what they're doing. That's like it's still them respecting the laws and to how they live and all that stuff. And I always like to watch them because, uh, I mean, I, I find it to be what, the core of what we need to be. To be yeah, honest absolutely. with you. <laughs> Except you know. we shouldn't eat each other. Like yeah, I was thinking do. that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely that part out. But most definitely. But yeah, we're horrific. So I don't understand that. I don't understand. I'm like, yo, human beings are so awful to one another. I like, know, why? I know. And some people seem to get off on, on mm -hmm. being like that. Some I sick just, stuff. I don't get it. That's why I okay. hide on a mountain in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I need a mountain too. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Oh, goodness. I was gonna ask you. Uh, I know last was that was that twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one when when you did that doc the documentary. I was twenty twenty, right? Well, I've done two documentaries. I've done a documentary on the town I grew up, uh, I live in, called Middle Village, and I did mm -hmm. a documentary on COVID. Which one are yeah. we talking about? The COVID. The, the COVID. Uh, the film is called Quarantine, and it's actually not out yet because mm -hmm. I thought it would be more. Uh, suitable to put the film out when the pandemic was over, <laughs> but the right? pandemic just—it just, yeah, <laughs> it like, just never seems. It just never. Uh, so you know that movie may never see the light of day because the <laughs> damn thing never seems to end. Right. But, uh, uh, I mean, it's a it's a great story, you know, and and we shot most of it right in the heart when you know when we were all kind of like in prison in houses, yeah. and we couldn't go anywhere. It was yeah. kind of most of the film was put together then when we were all in house prison. And uh, it was a look at how people were dealing with not being able to see their loved ones and, 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 and holidays alone and all those, t you know, terrible things that we had to live with uh, during the pandemic. And, and it's very, very impactful. And, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't have the impact uh, that it will when the pandemic's over. I mean, right. you put it out right now and it's like, oh, yeah, it's another COVID thing. You know? <laughs> it's like literally... Uh, you, we're not out for it to for it to speak to people. We have to kind of be separated from COVID a little while to understand the the true, yeah. you know, how uh, the impact it had on people. And sadly, yeah. you know, Philadelphia, which is a city in my state, reinstituted mask mandates today. So we're we're literally, you know, still in the heart of of the pandemic. You know, you would think yeah. it was over, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's like one minute they're like, uh, you're like, you know, you just don't know what to believe. And it's kind of like, I just don't keep my eye off of them. They say one thing, I'm just looking like, mm hmm, that's what you say. <laughs> you know, they're never done. They're never done. But I mean, that's true. Uh, you know, everything you just said about, you know, when it, ha it having that effect, you know, you have to be separated from it so people can really get grasp it and see how it affected people. Right. You know? Yep. I didn't people realize still, how much it affected me until like not that long ago that I was still living in it. But am I out of it? But I'm literally still in it, like as if it just happened. And you know, there are some amazing facts that when I'm doing research to do the movie that blow my mind. Uh, uh, 
over 88% of people who get severe COVID over the last uh, six to nine months are people who are unvaccinated. So it's a problem of people who are vaccine deniers who are keeping the pandemic going. People who are vaccinated and fully vaccinated are still getting COVID without a doubt but the percentage of them who are being hospitalized and dying are in the very, very low single digits. So it clearly shows that vaccination is working. But sadly, there are people out there who are vaccine deniers and, and are, are putting propaganda out there who are uh, giving people justification not to get vaccinated and those people are still getting very sick and are, yeah. are, are, and are dying. And that's why the pandemic won't end until we all kind of get our shit together as a group. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I saw, saw too, like, that I think that, you know, because I was listening to a few doctors, too, that made a lot of sense when it comes to our, our health care and being more um, transparent, you know, and with people. Because... Uh, yeah, because I was reckoning with both sides, you know, because I saw I saw the world just lose their minds mm -hmm. and people scared, not really knowing what's going on. And, and I, I empathize with both sides because, you know, you just trust that everything's going to be OK. Like you're supposed to be able to trust your government and all that stuff. You would think like police and all mm -hmm. that. And then you have your other side. They're like, I don't know, because this is fast. Which you can completely understand that. But then I also wanted people to understand that that didn't know when it came to, like, say, like the black community. Mm -hmm. um like a lot because a lot of black people didn't even realize that 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 this had been an impact on us too where we went through a lot um i'm still doing like studies and um i share um on some of my pod platforms the mm -hmm. uh the medical history of um black people brown people um mm -hmm. the experiments they they would do on women and um with the uh tuskegee and it was just a, a mass amount of them and and i want wanted people to truly uh, just empathize in a way where they could understand why that hesitance would be there because there's a whole history, you know, and I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to play, bring you to a place that upset you. Oh, no, you didn't. It's okay. Um, like I said, I'm human. <laughs> no, I understand. No, um, no, because, you know, my mom, she had, you know, like her medical care wasn't the best. And I didn't see it at that time. So I'm working on it now to be a voice. Mm -hmm. But I just want people to be like, you know how you were saying you never know what someone's going through or what they've been through. Mm -hmm. So now, sadly, uh, you know, people are imperfect yeah. and history for, you know, it's so funny when you really think about it. If humanity is going to last for as long as the sun's supposed to, we're supposed to last for billions of years. And uh, we're only around two or 3,000 years into telling this story, believe it or not. We're in the infancy of humanity. And uh, we can only hope that, uh, that as we go along, uh, we will understand what being human truly is. Yeah. Very much so. I know I'm trying to work on it. You like, you know, like that's the energy I always want to have when I'm around anybody is to, I want to leave that impression on you, you know, that I want to touch your heartstrings, you know, when I mm -hmm. speak, I, I want my words to, to be something. so powerful that they, they, you know, they get in here, you know, they mm -hmm. touch that human in, in you, right? <laughs> I don't care how mean, I don't care if you're, you know, someone that's racist, I, I'm going to speak to your heart. Because I know somewhere in there, there is one. You know, and that's how I just feel like. I sold I mine on eBay. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're still doing that. Yep, yep. <laughs> I got 12 bucks uh, for it. I figured I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> you only got 12. Yep. Could have got you more. It was a very small one. <laughs> I'm not like the Grinch who had his heart <laughs> grow 12 sizes that day. I have a very, very small one. Oh my goodness, that's funny. That was crazy that I told you. See, I cried, and but it's okay. I don't want you to feel bad. I just am a crier. <laughs> but I didn't no, see I that one coming. I didn't no, see that no. coming. I mean, I would feel bad if I if I said something mean to make you cry. 
<laughs> and I said something, you know, we're talking like we all two human beings who are communicating with each other. And sometimes the reality of life is overwhelming and makes people sad. So I get it. Yeah. Especially this reality. This is some crazy stuff going on. I don't know if I'm coming or going sometimes. I just yeah. wake up and I'm like, this shit is really happening. <laughs> I don't know what to think. I just, you know, I just, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm, Think I just was telling someone today, I was like, I, I'm so happy that I, I'm able to find peace. Like I'm one of those people that I just I just can because if I couldn't, I'd probably lose my mind because this is scary. Yeah, I mean I think all you could all you can do is just uh plug along and be true to yourself and be true to the people you care about yeah. and do your best to be kind. That's all you can do. That's very true, very true. And be a voice. Yes. I try boy. to, but nobody listens to me, so it doesn't matter. I listen to you. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about them. <laughs> I'm all that matters. <laughs> kidding, kidding. But no, yeah, I think um, well, what you do and, and your your kindness, you know, you definitely, it all adds up, all plays a part, you know, when we all come in contact, and, you know, mm-hmm. and it, change can happen one, one, one at a time, too, no matter how. If it, I feel like this, if it can be that bad, if the world can just be this bad, right? Then it can be that good. That just makes sense to me. Because why, why, why not? <laughs> there are some places you know? in the world where there's perfect harmony, and those places are wonderful places. Yeah. 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 I'm just trying to get people pumped up. I'm like, can you just imagine like everybody just like each other? It'd be like a big old world slumber party. We just all it. Like, I mean, that would be the best. Absolutely. Everybody's just happy just to just to be here. Mm. Yeah, that's my dream for the world. For our children. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Well, my daughter's off in college doing wonderfully amazing things. I'm a very proud dad, and I'm hoping that uh, she is uh, uh, a picture of what the future is going to be like for humanity, because uh, yeah. that would be wonderful. But we'll see. Yeah. That was stuff. And what I've seen, and you know, you being her dad, and from what I've seen, she's gonna she's gonna do great things. And people so. that come across her are gonna be blessed. I hope so. I hope so. so. I have a dear friend who does my show, uh, Tiffany Shepis, who's uh, been in many, many movies. And I spoke to her about her earlier. And her daughter was uh, shot uh, at high school. Uh, and uh, thank God she survived because she's a wonderful, beautiful young lady. But sadly, her best friend, who was right next to her, perished. And just yesterday, uh, her daughter, uh, Mia Tretta, was on uh, uh, on the white in front of the White House with Vice President Harris and with President Biden, fighting for gun reform. And uh, she's just a kid. I know she's under eighteen. I think she's maybe seventeen. And. Uh, Young ladies like her are the reason that there is so much hope for the future because she took something that was so horrific and so negative and so rotten that happened to her in life and is trying to turn it into a positive to save people, to save children in the future and to, you know, keep guns out of the hands of lunatics. So, I mean, there is so much hope for the future. It's one of the main reasons a cranky old middle-aged guy like me (laughs) <laughs> Still could smile. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Yeah, there is still hope, and and that's we have to put it in because they are the future, you know. And if they're doing, they they seem to be doing a great job from what I've seen. I think we are in good hands if we just keep Absolutely. doing what we're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. And uh, you know what? Let's talk about fun stuff again because we got into a deep range. I I I don't know if you know this, but I just finished a werewolf movie. Ooh. And it's called Ooh. Full Moon <laughs> Fever, and it has uh, Marianne Hagen, who many of you will know from uh, Mike. Uh, from she played Kara Strode in Halloween uh, in a Halloween movie, and uh, she was oh. on Friends, and she has a wonderful career. And she's uh, she uh, plays my wife in Full Moon Fever. My dear friend Scott Schiaffo is in it. Plays Dr. Lawrence Talbert. If you are an old uh, fan of the original Lon Chaney Werewolf, you'll get the, the connection there. And uh, it, it's fun because Mr. Hush, of course, is a vampire movie. And now I'm making my werewolf movie so that uh, when I'm done, which is going to be soon, I'm going to uh, retire and have all the silly, silly monsters I always wanted to make in the can. Okay. So this, so this is, this is the one. 
Yeah, this is the one. This might be it. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know because Jay Z said that. Who else? Somebody else said they was done for like five minutes. <laughs> Everybody's like, I'm oh, done. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> yeah, one more in yet. Then then you're sitting at home, you're like, wait a minute. Wait, wait, Jay Z did Jay Z buy the nets or am I mistaking him with somebody else? I don't think I heard I don't know. I wouldn't Is he be the one surprised. married to Beyonce? Uh huh. He bought the Nets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he mar- uh, he owns the New Jersey Nets. Well, what did this big, happen? And, oh, <laughs> many many years ago. I never so knew he that. Went on and, he went on and, and he owns a, a basketball team. So I mean, he's huh. got his hands full, especially. If yes, he, he does. Yep. I didn't know that. I I know I saw some uh, Damon Dash or something talking about him trying to to get a team. I can't remember what team it was. And somebody was like looking at him like, really? He was like, well, I tried. At least I tried. <laughs> I didn't know Jay-Z had one. Yeah, he was Jay-Z like, I'm thinking owned- living big. He's like, I'm going to try to get one. I, don't, I didn't, didn't do it. owns the Brooklyn Nets. Wow. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. I wish I owned a basketball team. I barely own a basketball. That is wild. That's going to give me a topic. I ha- I'm a, oh, I'm in the world of sports now. I have a show I do. It's called, uh, What's it even called? I just forgot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep it a late podcast with Brandy J. I do sports talk. And um, it's, it's it's a lot of men that are on there, but do commentary under uh, all the different types of sports you can go under. And you can actually have a setup where you can do the, you know, do the commentary. But you have to just have the game on yourself if you want to watch it. But it's really neat. And I've met a lot of, like, uh, different people within the industry and then have big podcasts and so I was trying to find my spot in there because I don't know a lot about sports, but I've been learning. And so that's how I kind of made a, a spot for myself was I did a podcast where I uh, asked all these different sports questions, sports quiz. And so while I'm doing that, I'm learning at the same time. And so we just do different topics, talk about why men don't take women's sports seriously, um, just all kinds of stuff. So it's been kind of fun. So definitely I, I don't know that if that's one. entirely true. I think there are some sports now that, some women sports that men take seriously like i love watching professional women boxers i love watching professional uh mma uh i I don't mind watching female golfers they're just some sports that you know uh, oh tennis tennis women have owned tennis for as long i would rather watch the number one woman (laughs) play the number two woman in tennis over watching the number one man play the number two man in tennis any day right Women right. just are there. I think women are better. I think the number one woman would beat the number one man in tennis. I really do. That would be interesting, right? Yeah. So who would that be? Would that be Serena? No, would be Venus? Would it be Serena? I think Serena. Is Serena number one right now? She might still almost be. There might be that one girl that, that yeah. one that just went around killing everybody. I have, I, I have no idea. If you're just saying, like, but in their, if you say in their, ta- in their, whoever they're, like, Serena versus Pete mm-hmm. Sampras, both of them in their prime, I'm mm-hmm. taking Serena. Yeah. Cause she's got. I was looking at her stats and everything, and like she's got like, like if you look at the numbers of like how much, how many things she acquired during this time, like she was just amazing. Like, no, no, I, was, I didn't have no idea. Yeah, she's a beast. And I didn't know that she was the younger sibling. Like I'm just like I'm learning new stuff every day. Thought mm-hmm. she was older. So yeah. And, I, and, and then there are game. And and, and and please, if I sound sexist, please don't take it that way because I don't <laughs> oh. mean to. <laughs> I, 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 for, for some reason, I just can't watch women's basketball. And, and I have a specific reason why I don't. Uh, when I watch basketball, I, I'm, uh, I personally like watching like dunks and alley-oops and like the game that's above the rim. And when you watch ladies basketball, it's a shooting game. It's passing and shooting and shooting three pointers, which I, yeah. I mean, even if it was two men's teams playing and nobody was playing above their rim and they were just teams that shot all the time, I would find that boring as hell, too. So it's more about uh, me having a a passion for watching like uh, Michael Jordan or Dominique Wilkins or, uh, you know, Rex Chapman or guys who played above the rim. LeBron Mm -hmm. James plays above, above the rim than it is anything about. Uh, I mean, if women were doing reverse dunks and windmills and alley oops, I would love watching their games just as much. Yeah, because I was going to ask you why you don't they? Is it because they can't, or that's not how you play women's basketball? Is it really 
just like I, she, you know what i don't uh, you know how terrible would, it, would i sound if i say they can't i mean they don't but i i don't know if they don't because they can't but you know if you watch wnba games or if you watch uh college basketball games like connecticut university of connecticut which is a the biggest female basketball program in the world is right up here by me. And I've watched, you know, games in passing. Uh, it's a very, very, it's a smart game. It's very pass he heavy to break down defensive rotations and stuff. But it's all, everybody is just, they just shoot, you know, layups and shooting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's a very pure form of basketball. But I grew up a kid in the 80s where it was Magic Johnson, yeah. Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, Dominique Wilkins, and Carl Mal the Mailman Malone, and all of these guys, you know, had inside games, yeah. you know, where they're doing reverse windmills and reverse jams and all, all, you know, all exciting over the rim kind of action. And I guess that's just as somebody who's in his fifties, that's what appeals to me when I watch basketball. Yeah. So it's not. We we'll have to sneak into that. You got me thinking now, David. But I'm about to get into the sports world so deep because now I can go investigate and see, like, why are these women out here doing above the rim stuff? Why aren't they swinging off of the, you know, I want to know why. Is it because some do it better than others? You got to be fair or the hate play game or you guys just. Uh... You know what I think in all honesty is? I just <laughs> think that I think the men players are all. I mean, if you're 6'6 six, six in the NBA now, you're small. Mm. You're, a, you're, you're, a point, <laughs> you're a point guard. If you're a six six oh, in the nice. WNBA, you're one of the biggest players in the league, and you're a center. Hmm. So it has to do, I'm sure, with size. You know, because I mean, I guess that's not fair either, because Muggsy Bogues and Spud Webb were both, five, I think, five two and five six, and they they won dunk contests. So I'm really not sure what the answer is, but uh, uh, I mean, that's the only sport for some reason that I have trouble uh watching uh, but what the hell do i know <laughs> well i got a question and you let me know if because sure. i know this can be a racy one for people it yeah. took me a minute then i said you know what damn it i'm gonna say it because okay. people just be canceling people you can't just go around canceling people oh no, okay. uh, if i can't <laughs> if you cancel me from the two fans i have it's not gonna be that big of a deal no, it's real though. It's like people don't even get to express themselves anymore about, it's like if you don't rock with the agenda or like the narrative, it's like, oh, you gotta go. Cancel her. Yeah. She is anti whatever or something. You I'm like, say that's something cool. that's totally harmless and people take, and people want yeah. to make it seem like it's, it's mean spirited. And that's yeah. why I was very gentle when I said why I like men's basketball better, because it's just <laughs> really the truth. I'm being honest with you. It's not, me being mean spirited, and I'll tell you, I like women's tennis better than men's because I think women play it better. So uh, you true. know, so I can have men <laughs> hating me for my tennis comment. I can have women hating me <laughs> for my basketball comment. Everybody can hate me; it'll be great. Now, go ahead, ask me the question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now, do you think that? Okay, so you know about the uh, the the transgender woman, women that were playing the sports. I think there was the swimmer. And Swimming, yes, yes. Yeah, that one. I, 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 how do you feel about that? Because I don't think it was fair. Oh. <laughs> I don't uh, think it's fair. Uh, it absolutely isn't. And that's why maybe we, that, we have male tournaments and we have female tournaments, and maybe we should have cross-gender tournaments that, that whatever your gender is, you can participate in. Mm -hmm. So that then it's a fair playing field. That's perfect. I was thinking that too. And, it, and when, I, when it was coming out of my mouth, as I was thinking it, it didn't sound bad, but I was saying it and then imagining someone else hearing it, and then it's sounding bad because, mm. <laughs> because it's like, it's just this politics thing in here, you know, and it's like people get so offended and don't even think about the other person, like the empathy factor, babe. If we really want to be honest with you, no one has ever cared about how women have felt 
about about this. Someone said, "Are you guys okay with this?" Because nobody does that. Because nobody cares. You know, we, we have thoughts and feelings too, and concerns. I have a friend that's transgender. She did it, she went through a transition transitioning. I was there, love her to pieces. She came on my show and she educated people. You know, and that's fine. But I still, I I can see that that side and be empathetic of everybody. But I don't I haven't seen it for for us. And um, you know, here's the way I look at it. And this may be a dinosaur way of looking at it, and people may get upset with me. But when I was in high school, uh, I I dominated in baseball and basketball, and I was six foot seven, two hundred and twenty pounds, and like a chiseled sculpture of an athlete when I was young. Now, I dominated in the boys slash men's leagues because I was big and strong and 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 extremely talented. I can't imagine if I played against girls or, or, or young ladies when I was, you know, at that age. I mean, I don't understand how that, if I chose to be a girl or a woman at that time, that would be my choice. And that, and I would be totally fine with that. And I would hope everybody else would be. But what would it say about me if I then chose to take my six, seven frame, my 225 pound body to go and play basketball with you know right young girls who are smaller and 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 are not meant to compete on the same you know playing mm -hmm. field at that point so i don't know i think it's selfish uh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't feel good about medals and trophies i won right you're just smiling yeah. like yeah i won this yeah. like yeah that's no. Yeah. Six, seven, <laughs> 225 pound man goes in and, you know, beats a bunch of five, six basketball players and is dunking on them and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and jumping from the free throw line, doing reverse jams on people who are literally like going up to his, you know, right. his, his navel, you know, what I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I mean, could you imagine if Shaquille O'Neal was in the WNBA? Ooh, or Michael man. Jordan. I mean, like, I don't mean let him why, play. <laughs> yeah, why would either one of them feel, why would they feel good about the accomplishments that they would have in the WNBA? Exactly. Is, is really the point I would make. Now, yeah. on the other hand, if a WNBA player is so exceptional that they make it into the NBA, they should be vaulted and, and because then they are one of the best in the world. But that also may sound sexist, so I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> These days, right? Yeah. But I mean, that just blankly, I don't know. Some people like don't want to answer. Some people do. I was like, for a minute, I was like, Yeah, you know no, what? I hope my answer Why do I have mean? to, you know? I hope my mean answer wasn't mean spirited and it wasn't mm -mm. intended to be. It was be. very honest. It was, it was logical. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would never feel good about myself. Uh, winning awards or competing against uh, 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 somebody who wasn't on the same playing field as I am. Right. I don't uh, know if yeah. that makes any kind of sense, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm just still tripping off that even it's even happening. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I'm mad at the person, like you, you know what I mean. But that's that that line where somebody can be like, "You're you're a transphobe," but you know what I mean. Like, no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> Just fair. It's not fair. Okay. It's selfish. Yeah, no. I'll give it back. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah. Crazy. Uh, if my daughter was competing in something that she worked her entire life to, to excel at, and then she lost to someone who was not born a female, I would think that was unfair. Yeah. But, Very true. Uh, you know, oh, it is what it is. I know, right? This world, I tell you, it's, that's why I have uh, my. My was cute. <laughs> you know what's funny? I maybe, I mean, maybe maybe <laughs> the answer is maybe the answer is to let them uh, compete, but the but when it comes to actually handing out trophies and and winnings, they sh maybe they shouldn't be allowed to to you know participate in in things that awards are won. Yeah. I don't think they'd be happy with that. They definitely won wars too. <laughs> I mean, here's a question for you that kind of boggles my mind. Uh, all of those unbelievable track and field records that Bruce Jenner holds to these to this day, are those are those now are those men's records or are they women's records? What's what's the answer that makes people happy? 
That, exactly. Because I was going to give you the, I, I would have thought it had been the right one, but it's about what makes people happy. Right. Me, logically, I would have been like, well, he was a man, so that would be men's record. Right. But now, right. if he ran, wait a minute, would it be, who would he be running against? <laughs> no, no, no I, I couldn't agree. I mean, if you said, if you said Caitlyn Jenner br holds all of the male track and field records, is that a sexist and horrible thing to say, or is it just the truth, or is it where do we? It's just a bizarre place that we are. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> it's too much thinking. You're like, man, I got other, you know now. You know, I got to count these numbers two to the power to the four. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like that meme. You, ever see that, you ever see that meme on Facebook where the woman's thinking and all the calculations are around her head? <laughs> That's what it's like in real life. Yeah, you shouldn't have to have to work so hard on these things. Not at all. Not at all. Got to laugh at it sometimes because it beats crying or or, sla or slapping somebody. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm with you 100% on that one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That was funny, actually. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> I was some other day. I was looking. I was like, I was who's so like out of Will Smith. You know, <laughs> he's really made a name for himself. Because I'm over here making jokes. <laughs> oh boy! I'm, just boy. Gonna, I'm not gonna say anything more because I know I'm gonna come to my house and smack right. the shit out of me. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I'm gonna make. Sure. I, I think it's. I kind of like it. I like it. But yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on. I had a great time. Yeah, I went through all the human emotions. Yeah. <laughs> I watched your I watched your show numerous times, and I'm absolutely honored that you had me on. And uh, uh, I think you're witty. I think you're charming. I think you have just a great show. And, Thank you. Uh, we'll see after this airing if everybody hates us. So we'll <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we, we'll, we'll have to. We'll, we'll do a show together called the Canceled Show. Right. <laughs> like, so what? What did they say? Did you get me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Well, I, we should be all right, right? I mean, if not, it's a good time. Listen, I don't give a flying. Fill in your adjective. <laughs> 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 well, thank what you so much. They're going to cancel me to the, to a mountain in Pennsylvania. I'm here already. Right? <laughs> true, true. I will, then you will just do a show from here and there, and we'll, like you said, we'll call it cancel. Yes. Fact, that's a good idea. There you go. Recently canceled. Still <laughs> right? <laughs> we don't want to let, yeah, somebody might try to pick up on that. I just, you just gave me all these ideas. Oh, my goodness. Great. Well, I know you have a family to get back to. I don't want to yes. let you go, but I got to let you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brandy. It was an honor and uh, privilege to be on. And anytime you would like to have me back, I'd be honored to be back on. Yes, yes, most definitely. Uh, this is a home for you. Anytime you want to come on, I'd love to shoot the shit with you. I mean, I think we have a great conversation because this is no, our absolutely. first. And now we see. So, yeah. And I see the refrigerator behind you. When I come over, make sure you have rice pudding. I'm a big rice pudding fan. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Let me see. I hope this works. Do I have rice pudding? <laughs> I can see if I have any. Let's see. Let's see. Make sure it works right. It better open because if it doesn't, that's just gonna defeat everything. Okay. The only thing that's moving is the juice. Okay. The milk's moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is like a little joke. My mom got this for me. Like she passed in two ten, but she got this for me maybe like a few years before that. Oh, sweet. And so I just always held on to it. And so when people ask me, I'm like, let me go see if I have any water and I'll open this up and like, and I'll close. I'll be like, I don't think I have anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep that right there. But, but yes, yes, yes. I would love to have you back. Thank you so much for just being you, being awesome you and Thanks, hanging Brandy. with a little girl like me. Oh, absolutely. You're awesome. I've always been a big fan. I like to consider you a friend. Thank you for having me. I mean, my dick. <laughs> well, I'm going to go and now uh, watch the end of the Met game and uh, maybe eat some rice pudding. Rice pudding, save some for me. Maybe not, but I love vanilla. <laughs> but <nice. laughs> but thank you so much. Bye.